With the first round of card reveals in the bag for Raya, they started teasing some Freljord themed bits and pieces along the way, just like they had done with Demacia. Everyone came to the natural conclusion that we were going to get Freljord cards revealed next for Legends of Runeterra, and that is exactly what has happened. So this video today is essentially card review to Electric Boogaloo because we have a new set of cards that were revealed, and I'm going to go through what each of them are and then kind of do a mini review, talk about whether or not I think they are well positioned. Now, again, starting off with the caveat that it's really hard to gauge these things until you see the complete picture. So a lot of it is going to be speculation kind of based on where the game is in its current form. And we're just going to put all of the cards up because I might reference back and forth between a bunch of them in this video. So we're just going to put uh, all six cards up because there were six revealed and then talk about them one by one. So here are the cards and we're going to start with the fun one, which is Sejuani, right? She's the champion, kind of the poster child for this Freljord themed reveal. And Sejuani is at level one, a six cost, five, six with overwhelm and on play. So this means from hand, she gives an enemy frostbite and vulnerable this round. Now, Vulnerable is a new keyword that they are revealing with this card reveal, and it essentially says the enemy can challenge this unit, forcing it to block. So where units with challenger can challenge whatever unit they want, a vulnerable unit can be challenged by anyone, which is an interesting twist. You might look at that and say, like, why does this need to exist if challenger already exists? But it's interesting because it's a way that you can still use that kind of mechanic, but potentially give it to other regions. So while Demacia has kind of been the challenger king for a long time, you might say like, hey, Noxus or Freljord might be a great home for giving things a vulnerability, right? The might of Noxus might beat down on puny vulnerable targets, thus, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's also a neat way to give units a drawback. Now, there are none that are in this reveal that have this, but in theory, you could print some pretty powerful units that might have an aura or kind of a static effect and then also give them vulnerable or just uh, all sorts of neat things you can do. So I really like the mechanic. And unfortunately, Sejuani is the only card that lists it out of the reveal. So it's kind of all we have to go by. But make no mistake, her playability is really powerful. If we don't even consider her level up, her level two, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, a 5-6 Overwhelm that potentially gives you a free trade is a good card. Historically, in any card game, if you have removal on a body, it's good. In the Elder Scrolls Legends, right, we had a number of cards like Leaf Lurker that early on in the game were incredibly powerful. It was understated for its cost, but it didn't matter because you put a body on the board and removed somebody else's. Similarly, cards like Flame Tongue Kavu and just a whole host of them really in Magic have also existed for a long time and they ended up being pretty powerful in their format because if you can advance your own board state while also uh, making your opponents worse, you're you're going to come out, you know, pretty favorably <laughs> in those. So her her playability is a pretty big deal. The one potential drawback on her level 1, if I had to pick one, like if we're being nitpicky is that the five attack does not mean that Sejuani trades into Scythria. Does not trade into, uh, you know, anything with six health, really. And that is a pretty popular health. Uh, it's a pretty popular stat line at six. When you think about uh, cards like Hecarim, Sejuani here also has six health. Scythria, there are a number of cards that just one to one, like six drop for six drop, she doesn't trade directly into and survive, right? So I think that is the the key here, which is if you're gonna be playing Sejuani, you're gonna get a free attack in and either kill something smaller because you're gonna frostbite it, give it vulnerable, or uh, you could do it to a bigger target just to get damage on it and then set it up for maybe an easier trade later. But, now here's, here's the good part, right? So I'm saying that that's a nitpicky argument because you're playing her in Freljord. So there's a strong chance if this is in your mid-range deck, and I think that's where she's going to end up fitting. I think she's a pretty strong mid-range play. Uh, you're likely running Omen Hawk, uh, maybe even 
the Averroes and Hearthguard, but at least Omen Hawk, and we might get more, uh, you know, Freljord buff cards in your deck effects in this set, but getting her up to, you know, a 6-7 on play is pretty reasonable, and then <laughs> all bets are off. She becomes fantastic. But as I said before, that's a nitpicky thing, right? Again, it's a body that likely gives you removal. She's got a keyword, right? Overwhelm is good, and we haven't even talked about her level 2 yet, so let's do that now. Her level 2, pretty standard, uh, plus 1, plus 1 in stats. Uh, that's like the, the go-to for a lot of champions when they level up, they get plus 1, plus 1. So uh, at level 2, 6, 7 for 6, Overwhelm, still has the same play effect, which is pretty interesting and neat because that means that if you level her up and then she dies but you play additional copies you still get that awesome play effect it's kind of the reason you want to play her but she then picks up kind of the static ability the aura of the first time i see you damage the enemy nexus each round frostbite all enemies that is kind of hilariously good now, in order to level her up, if you go back to the level 1, she levels up when you've damaged the enemy Nexus in 5 different rounds this game. That sounds relatively difficult, but I think there are some pretty interesting ways that you can pull this off. So, if you are running her with like a Noxus deck, and we're going to talk about why you would consider running her in a Noxus deck in a little bit, but let's just say you are. The one cost like deal one damage to anything is just a nice cheap way to make sure that you get damage on a nexus on your off round right so if you are you know on the evens let's say so it's round one it's gonna sound really weird but spending round one to just ping the enemy nexus if you know you're running sejuani might actually be the right call with that particular card in that particular deck and then on round two you could play your two drop hopefully you get the damage in and uh, you might do that with something like Ruthless Raider. So again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then round three, if you maybe, uh, you know, again, play something that pings the enemy Nexus, et cetera, et cetera. And then round four, you get your attack. You're just, you're trying to ensure that by the time that round six comes around, five out of those six rounds, you've hopefully damaged the enemy Nexus. And then she can come down uh, as a level two and really give you that big swingy effect. And when you combine her with Ash, specifically like a leveled up Ash, you have the opportunity to create situations where the entire enemy squad is frostbitten and now also because of Ash can't block. So there is insane like game locking combos that you can pull off with Sejuani that are, I think are pretty neat. I don't think it'll be common because in order to consistently level up Ash and consistently level up Sejuani, I think you're uh, kind of doing two different things. It's two different game plans. I think that they're both great mid-range cards. They might even end up in the same mid-range deck, but I think the, the situations that are good for leveling up Ash, right, and that sequence of events is just different from the, the same ones that level up Sejuani. So I think that the likelihood or... Uh, at least the frequency in which you're consistently leveling both up will be small. I think it'll end up being one of those things where you kind of feel out the pace of the game and you do it to one or the other. But uh, Sejuani, really powerful. Now, the last card I want to mention in regards to her, they didn't come out and expressly say this, but it was the only spell they showed, so I think you're supposed to kind of naturally assume that Fury of the North is also her champion spell card. And this is another card that I really like. Give an ally plus four, plus four this round at burst speed for four that's a lot of damage and the fact that it also grants for health is really important because this means that you can potentially push damage through on a unit with say overwhelm and have that unit survive the trade so where a lot of like uh, you know overwhelm style buff cards in the base set were likely sacrificing that unit so i think about like might from noxus might is a plus three plus zero and gives the unit overwhelm but because of the lack of a boost to health in many cases you're kind of like sacrificing that unit to just push extra damage in this is a card more in line with uh, buffing an existing overwhelm unit so you've got your overwhelm unit somebody goes to block it with uh, you know a relatively large 
follower or champion or whatever opposing unit so that they can kind of soak as much of that overwhelm as possible and then you hit them with the fury of the north you get a lot of damage in and you survive the trade uh, i really like this card so that again is likely the sejuani spell card as well but they didn't come out and expressly say it so we'll have to wait and make sure that gets confirmed now the next card i want to talk about is ruthless raider so this is the two drop and this time i'm gonna i'm gonna get those icons right this time it does have toughness if you watch my last video i improperly identified a uh, unit as having toughness when it ended up having barrier uh, this one does have toughness so this is a two cost three one with overwhelm and toughness if you are running a Sejuani deck, I really like this card. And to be honest, in certain aggressive lists, which have not really existed in Freljord, I think this could make a big splash because Overwhelm is really strong. And I talked about it quite a bit in the last video when I thought the other unit had toughness. But toughness is nothing to sneeze at because there's a lot of ways to deal one damage in this game. And so this one health is a bit scary, but this protects you from Vile Feast. This protects you from Withering Whale. Uh, this is again ripe for uh, buffing the unit to protect it and because you're already playing it in freljord you have access to things like elixir and now fury of the north like fury of the north on this card is just great as far as pushing damage and then likely keeping the unit alive so i really like ruthless raider if you have a proactive strategy now speaking of ways to deal one damage Ember Maiden is another card that was revealed. This is a three cost three two, and at round start, you deal one damage to everything. So this is all your units, all the opponent's units, and both nexuses. This card, if you can protect it, is bonkers in certain decks. Again, there's a lot of uh, ways to deal one damage in this game, but there's also a lot of things with one health. So if you can play and protect Ember Maiden, you can shut down spiders really hard. It is kind of absurd how good that card is. If you're also running the, like, Scars deck, or more importantly, a Crimson deck, so again, pairing with Noxus, when you think about the Crimson units that give you a bonus whenever they take damage, Ember Maiden is a great activator that also helps suppress your opponent while letting you be passive with your Crimson units and still getting those benefits, right? Ember Maiden is just a beautiful activator it's a great way to, again, ensure that you are hitting the enemy Nexus, even on your off turns, because it does it to everything, so it helps you level up Sejuani. The big gamble, again, is this two health. A three cost unit with only two health has to be pretty powerful to warrant that two health because of cards like Mystic Shot. Whether or not this ends up being good in practice is, is tough to be seen right? Because yes, it has two health. That makes it a bit brittle. But you're also in Freljord. So cards like Omen Hawk help, cards like Elixir help. So it's potentially not as big of a drawback as it looks like on paper, but the two health is a bit scary. So this is one of those cards that I think has a lot of potential, but one that I think needs some play testing before you can make a definitive statement on it. And then the last card they showed off is one that I just think is kind of bonkers. Um, Stormclaw Ursine is a 5 cost 6-6 six, six with Overwhelm and other allies with 5 plus power. Five, I can't even talk. 5 plus power have Overwhelm. Yeah, you are, you are not blinking there. Uh, that is a real card. That is a 5 cost 6-6. Six, six. So this is a 5 cost that trades in with Scythria, trades in with Sejuani, and lives if it's not hit with the... Uh, play effect from Sejuani has a keyword in Overwhelm and then grants Overwhelm to other big units. Now, specifically, Noxus has a lot of cards that have five attack power and no keywords or non Overwhelm keywords. So, this card makes some of your Trifarian units pretty nuts. This card is. It's just a house. Like, I am. I am so excited to, to work with this card because the amount of pressure that this thing brings to a board, at least in the current state of the game, is is pretty impactful. It's pretty relevant. That's, that's a big stat line with a really good keyword if you are playing a proactive deck. And the fact, again, that it grants everything else overwhelm. So, you know, when you're talking about something like Glory Seeker, right? It, it's a 5-1 with Challenger, but if you're... You know, playing it a little bit later in the game, but you have the Stormclaw on the board. Now you can potentially use it to trade into something and get bonus damage in. 
Oh, there's a there's a lot I want to do with this big bad bear. This is a bad bear. Now, one last thing I want to highlight here. For whatever reason, the bear does not have a rarity gem yet, so we don't know what rarity it will be. And that also is a throwback to the last video. So in the last video, the ranger that was showcased, uh, it was the 4-1 scout, last breath when it dies, you summon a 4-4 that happened to have a three cost. Now that card had a gem, and normally in the current state of the game, cards with gems are also actual cards that you can main deck, and cards without gems are usually tokens. And in the last cards that were revealed, we saw Valor did not have a gem, again, because it's you know, a token, right? It's a created card or a generated card. And because of the presence of the gem, there was a lot of speculation that that three cost four four might be playable, which if it is, let me just retroactively say that card is also bonkers. Uh, but all, again, a lot of that speculation was because of the presence of the gem. Now, here we have Stormclaw revealed. This does not have a gem. So there is a part of me that wonders if maybe the three cost four four is in fact still just a generated card and that whatever template they use to create this from their test environment, it might not be accurate. As somebody who's covered a lot of card games and seen a lot of preview cards, I know that whenever they do these reveals, it is not 100% set in stone and it's not on the same uh, necessarily like build or sometimes the things that they use to create these uh, card previews, these screenshots are not the same as what's in the client. I know that sounds weird, but just the way that they generate these images is not necessarily the way that they will 100% always appear in the client, in the finished product in the game. So uh, Stormclaw Ursine, again, all indications, because we haven't seen anything that creates it, are that this is a real card despite not having a gem. It's also possible they just ha haven't assigned it a rarity yet. And again, the 3 cost 4-4 four, four may or may not actually be uh, a card. I, I lean towards it being a token because it was an extra card that we got in the last reveal. If you are kind of paying attention here, here we get Sejuani and three other cards, realistically, because Fury of the North is, again, kind of part of Sejuani. And so if you're following that logic for the Demacia reveals, it's kind of like we got Quinn and three other cards, and then uh, the additional, right? So the seventh and eighth were Valor, and then the 4-4, four, four, and I think that those are both just uh, created or generated cards. So anyway, just a quick recap and, and mentioning of uh, what the gems may or may not mean, and, and talking about some speculation from the last video. So, uh, now that you've seen the cards, this is the part where I want to know how you feel. Uh, I really like these cards. I felt like Freljord lacked a lot of proactive presence in the base set, and everything I'm seeing from this says that Freljord is going to be uh, a bit more viable, uh, or at least more mid-range viable for sure, but a, a bit more viable to get to attacking. And I'm excited about that. I, I like the overwhelm uh, strategy. I like the uh, kind of support for the dealing damage to everything, right? In terms of dealing damage to the enemy Nexus to help your Sejuani, dealing uh, damage to your own Crimson units, things like that, your own Scars units. I just, I, I like that the cards we were shown here expand upon the design space uh, holes that we kind of already saw in the base set for Freljord. So it it's encouraging. You know, it's very clear to me, at least for these uh, first couple of reveals, that they have an idea of what they want the regions to do and how they want to expand upon it. So, uh, so far, I've, I've really enjoyed the reveals. Kudos to Riot. I have not seen a ton of things, honestly, that I think are just downright bad. The closest the closest I would say would be that uh, four or five scout. And again, scout's a really powerful keyword, but I think that might be the weakest of the cards we've seen so far. I don't know. But uh, as I said, okay, we're wrapping up for real now. I promise I'm ending it. I want to hear from you. Uh, which of these cards are you most excited for? For me personally, it's Stormclaw Ursine. I think that card is going to be really powerful. Just kind of busted good. A five cost six six with a relevant keyword that also kind of boosts your entire team should not be underestimated. And then again, same thing that I said for Sejuani earlier applies here as well. If you're also, you know, running Omen Hawk in this deck, then this, this could be a five cost seven, seven um, or more. It It's going to be a big bad bear. So anyway, if you made it this far. I appreciate you. 
thanks for watching and you know hopefully you'll swing by for future reveal videos talk shop theory craft this is my favorite part of any card game is when we get to see new cards you get to theory craft you get to think about you know design decisions because i'm a nerd for that sort of thing so yeah thanks <laughs>